Let us now recite the stewardship creed. I believe in the God of love and mercy who has chosen me to be a steward. I believe in loving like Jesus because love is the only way to righteousness. I believe in giving because giving is the best proof of loving. I believe in freely offering my time. I believe in humbly sharing my talents. I believe in generously sacrificing my treasures. For I know perfect renunciation leads to unlimited fruitfulness. I believe that the best time to give is now, not tomorrow. Much is asked of me because much has been given to me. I will be the first to give. I will not wait for the others. I will keep on giving even if others do not give. I will not be afraid to have none, for I know that the Lord will always provide. He will take care of me and bless me. I will keep my needs and wants simple and few, for I know that in freeing my heart of selfishness, I will grow in holiness and happiness. I am a steward of the Lord. I will return all gifts to Him with abundant yield. I praise the Lord for His goodness and graciousness, now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray the act of consecration to Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, I consecrate myself today anew and without reserve to your divine heart. I consecrate to you my body with all its senses, my soul with all its faculties, my entire being. I consecrate to you all my thoughts, words, and deeds, all my sufferings and labors, all my hopes, consolations, and joys. In particular, I consecrate to you this poor heart of mine so that it may love only you and may be consumed as a victim in the fire of love. I place my trust in you without reserve, and I hope for the remission of sins through your infinite mercy. I place within, you, within your hands all my care and anxieties. I promise to love you and to honor you till the last moment of my life, and to spread as much as I can devotion to your most sacred heart. Do with me what you will, my Jesus. I deserve no other reward except your greater glory and your holy love. Take, the, take this offering of myself and give me a place within your divine heart forever. Amen. Prayer to Saint Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us the path in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ano kayang celebration natin ngayon?
Morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the celebration of our Holy Eucharist this Friday, August 13, 19th week in Ordinary Time. Today we celebrate the memorials of Saints Pontian, Pope, and Hippolytus, priest, both martyrs. After years of schism between them, Saints Pontian and Hippolytus were recon reconciled and suffered martyrdom together under Emperor Maximus Thrax. We shall now begin our celebration. My brothers and sisters, together with your own individual intentions and the individual intentions of those who join us through live streaming, and for my own individual intentions, and for the intentions offered in this Mass, we continue to pray for all of us Filipinos that we faithfully heed our health and safety protocol so that God can save us from this pandemic. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries in the Holy Eucharist when today we remember Saint Pontian Pope and Hippolytus priest martyrs. Let us first call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. Let us pause for a short moment to examine ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the precious long suffering of the just, O oh God, our Father, we pray, bring us a great increase of love for you and always prompt in our hearts constancy in the holy faith through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, In times past your fathers, down to Terah, father of Abraham and Nahor, dwelt beyond the river and served other gods. But I brought your father Abraham from the region beyond the river, and led him through the entire land of Canaan. I made his descendants numerous and gave him Isaac. To Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau, I assigned the mountain region of Seir in which to settle, while Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron and smote Egypt with the prodigies which I wrought in her midst. Afterward, I led you out of Egypt, and when you reached the sea, Egyptians pursued your fathers to the Red Sea with chariots and horsemen. Because they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between your people and the Egyptians, upon whom he brought the sea so that it engulfed them. After you witnessed what I did to Egypt, 
and dwelt a long time in the desert. I brought you out, I brought you into the land of the Amorites, who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I delivered them into your power. You took possession of their land, and I destroyed them, the two kings of the Amorites, before you. Then Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, prepared to war against Israel. He summoned Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. On the contrary, he had to bless you, and I saved you from him. Once you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho, the men of Jericho fought against you, but I delivered them also into your power. And I sent the hornets ahead of you that drove them, the Amorites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. Out of your way, it was, your, it was not your sword or your bow. I gave you a land that you had not tilled and cities that you had not built to dwell in. You have eaten vineyards and olive groves, which you did not plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. Who smote great kings, for his mercy endures forever. And slew powerful kings, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. And made your land a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. The heritage of Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures forever. And freed us from our foes, for his mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of man, but as it truly is, the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? Whatever, he said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, 
unless the marriage is unlawful and marries another commits adultery. My brothers and sisters, the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, good evening. Good evening, po, Monsignor. So, our Lord Jesus was not married, and he was not a family family man, but he really defended marriage, and in turn defended the family. He did so because he did not want marriage and family to be broken. He wants marriage and family to remain one. Just as God remains one, even if they are three persons. So, in this sense, maybe in the mind of the Lord, family should be the reflection of the Trinity. If there is oneness in Trinity, there should be also oneness in marriage and in the family. That is why he really defended marriage and family. And that is what we see in the gospel for today. Some Pharisees approached Jesus to test him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause, whatever? So, the Lord Jesus, quoting, Um, from the book of Genesis, going back to the beginnings of marriage, in the end, gave us a categorical answer or gave them a categorical answer of no. And he insisted that what God has joined together in marriage, man must not separate. But Pharisees countered our Lord. They said to him, then why did Moses command? that the man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But the Lord Jesus did not give in to their counter-argument. Instead, he put the blame on them. He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wife. But from the beginning, it was not so. So for the Lord, those who insist or those who are vent on divorce are not only hard-headed, but they are hard-headed which is even worse. And the Lord reiterated, in the end, he reiterated 
that marriage should not be broken through divorce, saying, I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, and marries another, commits adultery. So here we see that even if the Lord was not married and he was not a family man, he really defended marriage and family. For the Lord, the right thing to do for marriage is not to, bro to break it or to separate it. For the Lord, the right thing to do for marriage is to promote its unity and indissolubility. So Jesus tried to do what is good for marriage. This is also what we see in the two saints we remember today. Saint Pontian, Pope, and Saint Hippolytus, priest, who became both martyrs in the end. But in the beginning, they were enemies because there was a schism in the church due to the fact that there was a pope, but there was also an anti-pope. And one of them is Saint Hippolytus. He was an anti-pope because he exposed the neglect and abuses of Pope as leader of the church. And he was doing that even before Pontian became a Pope. And so when Pontian became a Pope, they technically became enemies. Wala naman siguro pa siyang nakitang abuses ni Pontian. But being an anti-Pope, they became technically enemies. But you know, God does not want division in the church. God does not want the church to be broken. And you know what happened with the mysterious workings of the divine providence? This uh, present Pope during the time of Hippolytus, or the new Pope, and Pontian and Hippolytus were exiled together. Nagsama sila. They were exiled in Sardinia because of the persecution of the church during those times. Makin mo magka, magkaaway, nagkasama. But you know, when they were together, they did what was right thing to do. And what was the right thing to do? They, they were enemies. So the right thing to do for them was to reconcile with one another. They are together in one place. So they got reconciled with one another and they became friends. You see, enemies became friends. And in the end, they were martyred. And of course, because they were martyred, they became saints. So we see here enemies becoming friends and becoming enemies, uh, becoming saints. Enemies becoming friends and in the end becoming saints. Because they did the right thing to do. 
And I think this is also a challenge for all of us during this time of pandemic that we should also try to do what is the right thing to do. And what is the right thing to do during this time of pandemic? Of course, what our health experts are telling us. So uh, especially now that we are experiencing the spread of the more contagious variant, the Delta variant. So anong sinasabi ng ating mga health experts? We follow the health and safety protocol. You know already, I don't know if you know them, but that has already been said so many times. You know? Sanitize your hands, wear your, mace, uh, your face mask, your face shield, social distancing, ano pa? Yun nga, sanitize your hands, no? So, let us do that. And now, because we have vaccine, we get vaccinated. But you know, even with this raging variant, Delta, there are still many Filipinos who are not following our health and safety protocol. I just heard from the radio this today that there was a venue, reception venue, that they had a, a birthday celebration. And uh, the children were present. Di ba yung mga children ngayon, kasama na rin sila sa mga nai-infect. So yeah, in the in during this time when we are experiencing this, there are still other people who don't follow our health protocol. And I also heard from the the news that in this city, in this particular place in that city, there are many people who are disregarding the health and safety protocol. Kaya sabi ko nga kanina, if we are hard-headed and not only hard-headed, but also hard-headed, this will bring us to what is worse. And that is now happening to us. We are now in the worst scenario of this COVID uh, Delta variant infection. Because before we were below, the infection, daily infection is below 10,000. Now I heard it's already above 10,000. 13, you see. I heard it yesterday, only 12, no 13. So that is what happens if we are not only hard-headed, but also heart-headed. We will go, we will, it will bring us to the worst scenario of our life. So my brothers and sisters, let us do the right thing to do during this time of pandemic, and we will be saved from this. COVID, the spread of this COVID variant, which is the Delta variant. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. 
it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O God, our Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyr St. Pontian and St. Hippolytus. And grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Pontian and Hippolytus, poured out like Christ to glorify your name. Show sport your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so in the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth as we acclaim. Holy. holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O God, our Father, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when Sapo was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O God, our Father, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O oh God, our Father, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy, all the religious, and all the laity. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Andrew the Apostle, Saint Pontian, and Saint Hippolytus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we now have the courage to pray to God our Father in heaven that he may deliver us from this pandemic. Our, our Father, Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O God, our Father, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Lamb of God, God you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are you who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May Jesus bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen. Communion Antiphon, O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord, who gives you your fill 
of finest wheat. O oh God, our Father, who in your holy martyrs, Saint Pontian and Saint Hippolytus, have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that, drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ, and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hand. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all, to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Andrew the Apostle, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Pontian, pray for us. Saint Hippolytus, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God continue to bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is over. Go and rejoice because you are always ready to do the right thing according to the call of the moment. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you. Thank you.